We're working on part five of problem five in the practice exam. The Hamiltonian path problem, ham path on directed graphs, is known to be NP complete. Prove using a reduction involving ham path that SQ is in NP hard. Be sure to clearly indicate which direction your reduction proceeds. So first of all, remember NP hard is the set of all decision problems such that if we could solve that decision problem in polynomial time, then we could solve all decision problems in NP in polynomial time. So this is the everything is reducible to this problem in NP uh, in polynomial time uh, part of NP complete. We've already shown that SQ is in NP. So if we additionally show that it's NP hard, then we've actually shown that it's NP complete. Okay, so we want to prove using a reduction that uh, SQ is NP hard. So we want to reduce from a problem that is already known to be NP hard, and we're being told to use ampath, to SQ, and we need to provide both algorithm one and algorithm two. Remember, both of those algorithms are part of the reduction. However, algorithm two is easy. I'm just going to write it in shorthand as yes, if and only if yes. Whatever answer we get back from SQ, we're going to give that ba answer back for hampath. Okay, so we need to solve ham path. Uh, let's see, and it does say prove using a reduction, so technically it's not asking us to just give a reduction, but if I recall correctly, later on I asked you to prove your reduction correct, um, so obviously you're just giving the reduction. But I, I tell you what, I will give the reduction and then we'll talk through how to prove it. So I'm going to say give, but you and I will talk through how to actually prove it. Okay, the first thing we need to know is what's the input to ham path. Right? So an instance of ham path looks like a graph, uh, let's call it GHP is equal to VHP EHP. And we've said this is the directed version. So this is a directed graph, which is nice because the graph for SQ is directed. And uh, an instance of SQ it's actually more than that, right? Uh, oh, sorry, this is Hamiltonian path. So it's actually that plus S and T. Okay, so let's call that SHP and THP in case we end up having an S and a T or something like that in the other problem as well. And those are the start and end nodes for our path. Now for SQ, we have GSQ, which is equal to VSQ and ESQ. And yes, technically, I should say set of star systems and set of wormholes, but those are so clearly vertices and edges, I'm just going to describe them as V and E. It might be worth saying, you know, note, uh, we consider a wormhole to be an edge, uh, we consider a star system to be a vertex. Um, what else is in the input? Uh, there is the start star system, right? So there is S, SQ. That's good. Uh, that's a candidate for being the same as... Uh, SHP. Uh, we've also got this threshold value, right? KSQ. We need to accumulate at least a K quest value. We've also got this, this function, uh, I'm going to call it theta, uh, SQ, and this is a uh, quest value. And it tells us the quest value of each of the nodes, right? And that should be everything that we need. Well, I mean, the obvious way to do this is to leave the graphs the same. Somehow we need to force the fugitives to visit every uh, vertex in the Hamiltonian path graph in that case. Uh, can we force them to visit every vertex in the space quest graph? Yeah, we can actually, we, we can use K to force them to visit every vertex in the space coast graph. Uh, we can just set, um, well, I, I mean, let's imagine, uh, let's imagine, let's have this, let's say theta SQ of V is equal to one for all V. Uh, in that case of V in V SQ, in that case, uh, we can set K to, uh, let's see, that can be, 
equal to the cardinality of Vsq. And that'll force our fugitives to visit every single star system in order to achieve the desired value. Uh, we can set this uh, to that, right? Uh, and that'll force them to start where we want. But how do we force them to end uh, where we want? That seems non-trivial. Let's think about what that means in the Hamiltonian path problem for a minute. If they have to end at t, uh, how do they get into t? Do we know? All we really know is that it must be along some edge that comes into t, right? We don't know which edge. If we knew which edge, then we would have one step of solving the problem. We could reduce it to another Hamiltonian path problem that didn't include that vertex uh, and end it on the node before it. And then recursively, we could build up a solution in polynomial time, and boom, we'd have solved ham path, right? So in the general case, we don't know which edge leading in we use. Uh, which le edge leading out of THP do we use? Ah, uh, we don't use any of the edges leading out of THP, right? We can't possibly use an edge leading out of the finished node because we're not allowed to revisit nodes. We're not allowed to, uh, because we're not allowed to revisit nodes, we're not allowed to visit the finish node until the end of the path, and that means we never leave the finish node. So actually, we could remove all of the outbound edges from THP. Okay, so in that case, there's no way to get out of THP, and we've already in the Space Quest version forced uh, the uh, the fugitives to visit every single system. If they visit the, the end system too early, just because of the fact that we've gotten rid of all of its outbound edges, if they visit the end system too early, then they won't be able to accumulate the quest call, uh, value required, right? Because they won't visit all the star systems. So actually, all we need to do is is this, and then this part I'm going to say in a little more detail. E S Q is equal to E H P minus the set of all edges uh, u comma uh, sorry not all the edges going into thp if i eliminate all those uh, our fugitives are definitely doomed uh, thp comma u um, such that u is in vhp oh well okay yeah no that should be fine use in VHP. So this is all the outbound edges from THP. So ESQ is the set of edges in the Hamiltonian path problem minus all of the places you could use to escape from that finish system. And in that case, we should be all set, right? Does this take polynomial time to construct? Well, certainly copying the set of vertices takes polynomial time. Copying the set of edges and deleting the ones that lead out of t takes polynomial time. Uh, copying the start uh, vertex takes polynomial time. Um, counting the number of vertices to initialize ksq takes polynomial time. Creating this function that's equal to 1 for all vertices takes polynomial time. Presumably it's represented as an array, right? So then it would take polynomial time. In general, who knows how long it could take to create a function, but as long as we know the representation, that's no problem. Okay, so does this work? Is this correct? Okay, this is our reduction what I've just described here. I gave algorithm two here, and I gave algorithm one over here. Okay, But is it correct? So to prove, it takes polynomial time. It's correct. Okay, but we're gonna divide that into two parts as we usually do. Part A is going to be that um, answer to sq is yes if answer to hampath is yes and part b is the answer to hampath is yes if the answer to SQ is yes.
So let's talk through those. Uh, we already talked about polynomial time. Okay, that is really easy in this case. So uh, how long does it take to copy the vertices? Poly time. How long does this take? Uh, this takes polynomial time. It's a little harder to do because we actually have to eliminate some of the edges, but it clearly takes polynomial time, and so on and so forth. I'm actually going to erase those annotations because they just look disgusting, uh, but we already talked through the polynomial time part. That is taken care of. How about correctness? Um, let's prove that the answer to SQ is yes if the answer to ham path is yes. So we get to assume the answer to ham path is yes. If the answer to ham path is yes, then there is some path starting at S, S leading to T through the graph given that visits every single node. So let's imagine we had that path in hand. We don't, but we can imagine it and describe what it means to have it because we know it exists. So we can we can give it a name. We just can't assume much about it. Nothing that isn't definitely true. Okay. Well, <clears throat> let's take that path and let's project it into the Space Quest version. The fugitives start at SSQ, which is perfect. They need to start at SSQ. And then they travel through the star systems in the order given by this path. Now, that's only going to be an illegal path if they ever travel out of T, because we eliminated all the edges out of T. Uh, will they ever travel an edge out of T? No, of course they won't, because the solution to Hamiltonian path won't have them travel out of T. T will be the last vertex on the path. So it's a legitimate wormhole route through the universe in Space Quest. So that's good. So far, so good. We have a legitimate wormhole route. Does it accumulate enough quest value? Well, we know from HamPath that it visits every single node in G. We know from SpaceQuest that every node has a value of 1. So if we add up all of those 1s, we get the number of vertices. And that's the K that we set. So that is taken care of. It is indeed the case that if the answer to HamPath is yes, then the answer to space quest is yes, because there is a path starting at the start star system that accumulates sufficient quest value. Notice that it doesn't matter that it visits all of the star systems. That's not a requirement of space quest per se. Okay, so that's not why the answer is yes. It's yes because the accumulated quest value is large enough, and we set up the problem so that that meant it had to visit all the star systems. Now that's going to be important in the next part where we say the answer to ham path is yes if the answer to space quest is yes. In this version, we get to assume the answer to space quest is yes, and that means there is a path that starts at the start star system. It's not cyclical, or they revisit a star system. They're not allowed to do that. Okay. And the total quest value along all the vertices in that path is at least k. Now, because the total quest value along all the vertices on that path is at least k, then it must be at least the number of vertices. And every vertex contributes exactly 1, because all of its quest values are 1. Right? Which means there must be at least v vertices along the path. Well, it's not a cycle. And that means that there can be at most v vertices, because there are only v vertices. So that means every single star system is on the path. Hey, that means this is a simple path that visits every single node. It starts at SSQ, but where does it end? We need to know that for this to be a solution to ham path. And we know that because of this cool thing down here. There's no way out of T. Because there's no way out of T, and because it visits every single vertex, it must end at T. That's its only choice. So in fact, we have a simple path that starts at S and ends at T. Is that simple path also a path that starts at S and ends at T in the Hamiltonian path problem? Well, clearly it starts at S and ends at T. That's no problem. Clearly it's still simple. It's, it's not cyclical, that is. Is it actually a path? Is every edge that made it a path in Space Quest also an edge that makes it a path in Hamiltonian path? Well, sure, every edge in Space Quest exists in Hamiltonian path, and there's some extras. So that finishes our proof. Because there was a solution to Space Quest, there was also a solution to Hamiltonian path, and so the answer to ham path is yes.